Good morning. Welcome to the Galactic History Show. How is everybody today? It's uh, another cool early spring morning here in Melbourne. I'm your host Chris Hales. It's uh, time for the second Galactic History Show for the week. So welcome to everybody in the chat room, on the call, and listening to this podcast later. It's uh, going to be another interesting show today. We're here with Andrew Bartis and Nikki Fetzi. Andrew's going to be delayed for a few minutes, um, so Nikki and I are going to kick off with a, um, a general discussion about something. Good morning, Nikki. How are you? Fantastic, Chris. How about you? I'm good. Good, good. I've um, just got my nice cold cup of tea here to wake me up, and uh, you're actually trying to warm up by the sound of it. Sounds like a cold day. Yeah, when, yeah when I when I was gone, you know, the weather has been extremely hot, up to 97 Fahrenheit, and I came back, and today, as uh, coming out, uh, it's it's extremely windy outside and cold. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, it's going to be a. Um, There's always a association yeah. with uh, weather with me. So, yep. Do you think it will actually um, stay cold, or will it warm up again? Um, there might be a, a slight storm <laughs> where I'm at, <laughs> so oh, we'll see. We'll see. Fair enough. Well, last week we got into some uh, some interesting topics, and um, this week we're going to continue to talk about a little bit about um, the males, uh, male and female sexuality issues. Uh, as part of the human uh, instruction manual that you didn't receive when you were born. And this has been going on for some time now. We've, we've been diverted a little bit, so we're actually um, just cleaning up one particular area of it. We're working our way up from the body, actually. We, we'd reached the, uh, the nether regions, as it were, the groin and lower chakras, and have stayed there for some time. Um, we'll kick off the journey northwards as time goes on, because we do have another topic to, to actually work on today. So um, without further ado, Nikki, shall we, shall we proceed with um, the topic of PMS? Yes. Uh, before I proceed, Chris, I just received a text from my uh, good friend, Dr. Luba, uh, who has an extreme con amazing connection with, um, uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, Galina Pana, uh, who has access to amazing high-tech uh, equipment from uh, Russia and uh, she, apparently Dr. Luba had, uh, have my T-Nano uh, product and she sent my pendant for her to test the um, the product and uh, she sent me a text um, allowing me to know that the pendant, let me read it for you, your pendant is amazing. It works also as an immune modulator. Now we have a real proof. So really? now we have scientific evidence of what my technology can do for people. As I've been tested to so many people when they're sick, all you have to do is put over your chest and you just sit, relax, five minutes, you're, you're like done with a cold or flu. That's mm. how fast it works. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I must say I've been having um, an interesting time because the, at the moment I'm not getting much sleep and... Um, that's been going on for weeks. Normally, I would probably have a cold or something by now, but I don't because I'm, exactly. wearing, I'm wearing one of your pendants, and it's actually yes. actually feeling very good. Yes. Someone your, is your, much uh, sleep. Af after I did the uh, body matrix, uh, deconstruct your body matrix for to sustain at higher frequency, it's sustaining it. And what it does is you're also at this time and also holding on to the T-Nano technology, you are sustaining and also you are getting a download of information. Hmm. You see what I mean? You're mm -hmm. getting a download of information that's going to help you move on to the next level. Okay? So that's what's going on. Mm. with you and that's one of the reasons why you cannot sleep and but the thing is like I said the T-Nano protects you protects you from uh, a lot of the negative energy in your field and also um, for your body immune system to kick up mm. so, will, will you be able to get some details from Dr. Luber as to the testing that they actually did what it, what it physically was 
Oh, um, yes, I definitely can get that. And uh, she said she is driving right now with screaming children. So, <laughs> But not so, right now. Yeah, that means not right now. And yes. uh, she is um, she is a, a licensed medical doctor that, uh, and, uh, you know, coming from her, I think, says a lot in terms of scientific evidence of what's going on. And um, she has other equipment, too, that she has that we expect experiment with the T nanotechnology where you know you put a person um, before and after when they hooked up and we examine the brain um, functions and before you touch the T nano there's not a whole lot of blood flow into the brain area but when you start touching the T nano technology in a couple of minutes you can see literally on her screen the brain um, the graph and the blood flow were, uh, was flowing to the area in your uh, brain area and and also the brain wave it shows the brain wave that you go into this theta brain wave it's fascinating equipment I mean this is like it, it, you have to literally record this and um, to show it but she has a lot of those uh, equipment, and that's why I, I, I was so eager to uh, get in touch with her. And, and I can't wait to actually send her the cones and uh, to uh, Dr. Galena Pana out in um, New York with all this uh, equipment to test next. What can this cone do? And there's other, there's other technologies out there we can measure in terms of your energy field. And I've done this already with um, your auras taking picture using Kirlin photograph, literally your energy feel is definitely intensified when you uh, is in touch with the technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one is on my website, <laughs> the before and after effect. Yeah, one of the things about the pendant is that it's, it's, um, it's got a front and a back. Mm -hmm. Okay, the energy is coming out of the front. It's, it's being pulled in into the back, and you get you get slightly different effects depending on which way you face the pendant. As far as energy going in, energy coming out. Do you want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, um, the the uh, the face that has the logo on it, which is the universal source symbol. Okay, but it kind of looks like an elephant, so I just mm -hmm. call it the elephant-looking logo, and that is when you typically put it on against your skin. If you are trying to send energy, okay, into your field, let's say you're sick, okay, mm -hmm. so when you're sick, it means you're low on energy, you're low on gas. So what are you going to do with your car when you're low on gas? You go and fill it up. Mm -hmm. So energy is the same way. You take the technology using the universal source sign, the elephant looking one, placed it on your chest okay, with that logo touching your skin and it will give you that energy. It fills you up. Mm -hmm. okay? It activates your immune system. Okay? But let's say um, now you have, let's say, um, heart issues where, you know, emotionally, mentally, you've been traumatized or somebody hurt your feeling and that you kept it in your heart chakra mm -hmm. so much so that you're, like, ready to explode. And if you continue living and being exposed to that environment, eventually it'll manifest into heart problems. That's why a lot of people that um, live in a very stressful um, working environment tend to have heart attack like the uh, stock traders, you know, um, those kind of work with a lot of aggressions, they tend to have heart problems because the energy manifested and caused damages at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is take the technology, okay? There's two ways you can do this. One, you can push the energy in and, and to dispel it. Mm -hmm. Literally, it'll push it out just like a balloon. You blow in the air so much so in the balloon that it pops. And that's how you disperse the energy. Okay, so it's a good, clean, high vibration energy coming in and pops it. Another method is you flip the disc, which is the um, the um, the seed of life. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the sacred geometry seed of life, and um, this is like the original basic of creation. Okay, this is not like your complex sacred geometry that people use to manipulate situation and energy. It's not that. This is a sacred geometry of creation, and that is that is that is the existence of what I do and where I'm from. So you take that symbol and then you place it on your heart chakra, okay, where you're blocked, 
and what it does is it sucks it out. Right. It takes it out. Mm -hmm. So instead of your balloon is so full, it's ready to explode. So instead of allowing it to explode, you release the air. Mm -hmm. So, so if if you were uh, should you actually use it sometimes in one direction, sometimes in the other direction, or yes. just just leave it? It it really depends on what you feel like. There is no wrong way. Mm -hmm. There's no wrong way of all how, how you go about it. But one thing is when you do release, let's say you uh, choose to release the energy, okay, and it costs less pressure on your chest. So when you release through the air, like think of it, a balloon, it's full blown, it's really tense, it's ready to explode. You open the mouthpiece, right, where you blow in the air, mm -hmm. and you deflate it, allow the air to release. Once you de release that, okay, you wanted to fill it up with high frequency, clean energy. So you take the disc and you flip over, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you use the logo, the universal source sign on your chest, and it'll, it'll give you to fill your heart space with that clean, high frequency energy. Mm -hmm. Because you, your body is made of energy. You don't want to, whatever you take out, you have to replace. Mm -hmm. Think of it that way. And most people, this is the, the problem, a lot of times people go release, they're releasing stuff and they're not filling it up with good, high, clean energy source. So they go out and, and repeat it again. With the, um, the disc, it's the same, it's the, um, the base of it, is, it would be, would be um, you know, pulling, pulling energy into the base and it will be coming out of the top. Would that be the same? Because it's actually got the, um, it's actually got the uh, uh, tree of life on the smaller of the two surfaces. Tree of life? On the you disc. Mean the seed uh, of life. Seed of, seed seed of life. life? Yes, seed of uh, life on the smaller surface. Um, okay, so yes, uh, because inside the disc it's an, there is an actual physical structure, mm -hmm. mechanic inside that does what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the 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 the, um, the mechanics. Okay, so um, if you wanted to pump energy in, which surface would you place on your skin with the disc? If you want to pump in energy, you take the universal so source sign, mm -hmm. which is the elephant looking on mm -hmm. your skin. Okay, and uh, and reverse it if you want to actually pull yes. energy out. Yeah, cool. That's right, and reverse. Very good. Very good. Yeah, well, I'm finding it to have a, an extremely beneficial effect, and it's very noticeable. In fact, other people that, that, that handle them start to report the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an incident on Tuesday night at a One People's meeting where one of the, one of the folks actually had brought a 16-inch cone in his car. And... Uh, He's a truck driver and he was telling me that when he drives around with a 16-inch cone, he experiences less issues with traffic around him. That's true. As, as far as he can observe. And so he, he, went and f he went and brought the cone in and sat it in the table in, in front of us. And there was about 15, 20 people there. And uh, everyone got very silly. It, was, it kind of changed the mood, lightened mm -hmm. the mood, as it were. And uh, they were finding it quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. Quite fascinating. In fact, he related one story where he, he actually, because uh, he's, he's very aware of uh, the energetics of cities as a result mm -hmm. of the information that Andrew's been putting out and yourself have been putting out, and uh, he decided he, he wanted to try and you know, you know, have the cone influence the whole city. So he took out um, a map book of the city. You know, you can buy maps of the city in book form yes. with mm -hmm. lots, of, lots, of, lots and lots of pages of detail. Mm -hmm. This is a big book. This is, you know, 250, 300 pages, very detailed. So he put the cone down on it and set an intention that it was going to clean up the whole city. Yeah, and, that and will he, work. And he left it there overnight and, mm -hmm. and took the cone off the next day, did his thing, and felt like he was being attacked all day and had a, you know, had a feeling that, that you know, he was fending off lots of energy. Mm -hmm. um, he, what he felt was that, uh, that you know, certain people in the city didn't like that very much. No. <laughs> No, because the city is basically is a um, is uh, the breeding ground 
for uh, negative energy, mm -hmm. negative forces, mm -hmm. uh, the banking system particularly, okay, the, we talked about how um, the, the court system, the government, they're all in it, mm -hmm. okay. So when you go and disrupt that energy with high frequency, they're not going to like it. <laughs> no, so, no, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's um, probably a significant thing, it probably, probably pings their radar as it were. And uh, I just noticed the chat may not have launched properly. I'm just launching it again. We'll just see what happens. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully it'll do. do oh, that, there. Yeah. No, that's actually no. I've got it working now. So, so okay. Good. My machine so, was, is a little uh, hesitant this morning. Um, you know, Chris, when when people do that kind of level of work, and um, you know, instead of driving around wasting gas. You know, we, we want to be considered of the all the um, the carbon dioxide and the um, the carbon that's been released. Um, you know, although yes, we do need carbon dioxide for the tree, but there's also other toxic uh, gas that come out from that. So we want to be a little bit conservative about how we do things. Mm -hmm. And you know, I like my easy button, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the map out, grading it, yes, grading it, putting lines, grading it, looking at longitude, latitude. You know, a lot of times the military have these kind of uh, mapping and uh, system, and you can use that and start gridding it. And yeah, you can do um, using uh, cones, but when you do that kind of level work, you know, basically you're going in to cut the jugular vein of the energy that's coming to feed this, mm -hmm. okay, to feed this dark energy force. So you have to protect yourself. That means, yeah, start wearing the... Um, the technology around you, you know, putting up barriers, protection inside your living space, and then um, because these people, they will, I, they can identify your energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a trick to it, and we'll discuss more. How do we go on a deeper level? How do you protect yourself doing this kind of work? Because otherwise, they'll, they will attack you and energetically and also they can literally identify who you are and they'll come back and they'll be like sending you know um, all sorts of um, legal action for stupid little things that you're like what mm -hmm. <laughs> you know there'll be st stupid stuff that comes up so they, they will then it'll manifest into on the physical level mm. and so we wanted to be able to identify those things and be prepared mentally okay mentally prepared what are the things that could be coming up so then you can prepare yourself you see what I mean so whenever you do energy work first thing in my rule book protection 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 mm. before you go do anything else Nick we're, we're planning to have a se seminar in in uh, I think about seven or eight days about using your technology to yeah. to filter the uh, negative energy out of sacred geometry buildings. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, do you want to talk about that now? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm really actually excited. Um, I'm looking into technology that would allow us to uh, see the Google satellite map and we can go over this pinpointing different areas, identifying buildings and how they are designed to harness the energy and some of the monuments, things like that, where the ley line, what, what to expect and um, uh, where and how are they using the energy to feed into their system? That's how they gain power. Mm -hmm. And by mean is that, like, just imagine, okay, when you are having a bad day and your energy is low and somebody come and call you, you know, and call you out for something and accuse you of something, when you're tired, you have no energy to defend yourself. But imagine when you do have lots of energy like as if you you drank uh one of those um what do you call those um bull bullseye drinks you know the mm -hmm, energy mm -hmm. drinks the energy drinks yep yeah and you're like full of energy you're like ready to take on anything mm. and that's that's what you want to compare it to okay that's how they harness that energy when they feed to them they have more power and it's true they get more power from that by that harnessing of the energy and you, if you really want to feel it, all you have to do is walk in into the banking, any of the banking system um, buildings, you know, you'll start feeling the difference. And bring your cone in there and see, the, the, you know, the before and after effect, mm. see how you feel. Yeah, well, it, uh, the, the best methodology is, um, is to actually use one of the cones. 
Yeah. One of the large cones. That's, we had this discussion yesterday. That's, that, that's the thing that, that has the most effect filtering the energy. Yeah. And has the most effect on, you know, literally cutting them off from it by just simply raising the vibration of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, the cone is actually much more powerful than the disc and the pendant. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's just that you can't wear the cone; it's too big. You know, it's like no, about no, it's five, six inches. <laughs> yeah, there's the several sizes, and the uh, yeah. and yeah. The, the 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 one the gentleman brought the other day was not quite the full size. It was the second next yeah. one down, and in fact, one uh, one of the other folks there had a an iPhone with the magnetometer app yeah. from Dr. Stephen Greer. And uh, he activated that and put it near the tip of the um, of the cone, and of course it went crazy because that's that's the point where all the energy is coming out of it. So that that was very interesting. Yeah. It wasn't sensitive enough to pick up anything from the pendant that I was wearing at the time. Yeah, <coughs> but it's, it, it it's, was it's the structural. It's a structural. It's a structural thing. Yes, yeah. The, the geometry of it. So the cone, it's like a laser point. That's why the tip of it. If you break that, then it will. The energy will be different. Mm. So you got to take care of the cone, especially the tip of it. So don't break any of that. All the energy comes. Uh, it collects from the bottom, mm -hmm. the base, and then shoots out like a laser beam. Mm. That's why it's highly effective when you use it to do healing on a person using the small one. The smallest one I have is a five six inches, mm -hmm. and you use that on both of your hands. And I'm I'm small. I'm five two. I have a very small hand. So I can use, I grab the base, and then I just use it to heal people, even doing my energy work. It's much more easier, mm -hmm. you know, to do. And most light energy worker, you know, they, they just use their energy, and they think they're conduit. And I hate to say it, as much as a conduit, you know, to using that to heal other people, they're already using their energy. You know, think about it. If, if the light being, higher being, St. Germain, whatever that is, need to heal that one person, right? Uh, they, why, why aren't they doing it directly? Why are they using you to be a conduit? Think about it. There's a reason. So you're using part of your energy as a conduit because as a human, you need to have that connection. Mm. So you will drain out your energy field and also your physical body, yes. even though you'll feel high afterwards. Yeah, you've, you've spoken about this before, that the, the light workers need to look after themselves more yes. if they're doing that kind of work because there's always some of their energy quotient in the, in the overall effect. Yes, and they can cause harm to the person who's receiving the healing. So um, that's why I said use the cone. The cone is, is a tool, just like you have a cell phone, computer, they're tools. Mm -hmm. Shoes are tools. You know, mm -hmm. everyone can run and walk bare feet, but it hurts. Right? Mm. Well, that's why we go and find comfortable shoes so we can maximize our time to walk, you know, from point A to point B. So it's being practical and logical. I create these tools so then we don't have to suffer. We can reserve our energy and use that energy to do our own self-healing. It takes energy, okay, to use energy. It takes energy to use energy. Important principle. Now, if, yeah. you, if you wanted to actually uh, use the cone, for instance, the cone, when, when uh, you receive a cone, you actually, um, part of it is that you have a short session to actually make sure that, that the user and the cone are actually, I think the process is that you're setting up, that is, is that you're making sure the cone and the user are actually connected. Is that what's yeah. going on? Yes, mm -hmm. you, it, it is. The cones, all, all the T-Nano products is uh, intelligence. Mm -hmm. That means it, it, it's it is programmed to work at the highest frequency for your only highest good. Okay, mm -hmm. so yes, you do have to tune in, um, tune in with the um, the technology, and you sleep with it or wear it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't carry the big cone around. No, although I do carry my six-inch cone in my purse, mm -hmm. so my purse gets really heavy. <laughs> so do you um, do you have to actually physically handle the cone to have a best effect when using it? It's better. Mm -hmm. It's better that you touch it um, in the middle or towards the tip, in the middle part of the cone, okay, or otherwise put it on the ground. Don't put it on the table. Put it on the ground is much better. It still works if you put it on the table. Like right now, I'm having my computers. I have all my cones laid out, and it's worked very effectively. Mm -hmm. So would you put the cones under the table, underneath the computer, if you're doing that, for instance? Uh, no, I put it right next to my uh, computer because it screen out um, all the negative energy that's coming through the computer system mm -hmm. and the yeah. internet. Yep. Well, there's plenty of that 
Yeah, Plenty instead of, that of stuff using coming yeah, instead of using crystals, I use my technology. Okay, it cleans it out and then it produces positive energy. Whereas crystal just harness the energy. And it doesn't trans, like it, it transmute it, but it doesn't. You don't, you know, it doesn't disperse intense amount of energy. Mm -hmm. Mine just like sucks it in all that negative and spew out a bunch of positive energy. So mm -hmm. it's like like it's like an air filter. Think of it like an air filter. Yes, you mentioned that yesterday that if you take one of the big cones into a court or into a banking building, it will actually it's it's a high frequency generator it will actually lift the energy of the whole area. Yeah. And uh, you'll find find yourself having a different experience. Yeah. At that point in time. Yeah, like and and another thing I wanted to clear clear for uh, our listener out there too is that when we do the uh, the sacred geometry of the um, the planning of um, the city and such, you know, and the ley line, we're not here to um, to disturb. Okay, yes, we are disturbing the bad guys, <laughs> harnessing the energy, but we're not disturbing Mother Earth. If anything, we're putting it back to her original form. Important. Okay, because yeah. yes, because what you said to me was that you didn't want to um, divert, change the ley lines because that's just replacing yeah. one system of domination with exactly. another. Well, all we want yeah. to do is is lift the vibration up so the other guys can't use it. Exactly, and then we're putting back to Mother Earth because th what they do is they harness it by uh, causing um, what do you call like a, um, derailing the energy to a different source mm -hmm. uh, or um, yeah. So the, um, they, they, instead of, let, let's say, you know, from point A to point B, direct, you know, line, they, they cause that to go to somewhere else. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a, a structural aspect to it. There's a strategic yeah. strategic planning that one has to do to, to, to work out the best spots to do it and uh, yeah. for the best effect. So mm -hmm. that looks like Andrew's actually dropped in. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, Andrew. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Nikki's with us here. Hey, Nikki, how are you doing today? Great, how are you? I'm doing good. It's just been one of those nonstop busy mornings with phone calls that started like four hours ago. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually mentioned the fact that Andrew's actually moved location to L.A. at the moment. That's correct. I'm here in Venice Beach with uh, Kelly, Kelly Fluke, a, a very good friend of mine. Venice Beach itself. So have you been down to the beach yet, Andrew? No, I arrived here yesterday. Um, I was staying with another friend, uh, uh, before a day, and then I'm here with now. I'm here with Kelly. Excellent. So hopefully you'll experience the Venice the the Venice Beach effect at some point in time. I gather it's a really interesting place down there. Oh, it's wonderful energy over here. Wonderful, wonderful energy. You got the people and the beach energy. It's just really fun. Mm, good stuff. Now, do you uh, want to talk about why you're in LA? Um, well, we're here right now to finish uh, a, a concept to pitch a, a TV show for everyone that's in the informational stream of what we're doing so that we can introduce to a larger audience what Ascension is, what spirituality isn't, and it is, and to bring about the basic tools of fear processing and, and limitations and expectation understanding so that all of the sources that can be a part of this documentary, docudrama, episodes, and then to find a person that is the production production person, director person, that has the vision to see us as emotional beings and to tell our story in the format of television. We're radio hosts. We are presenting in the format of voice. Mm -hmm. And to bring it to the visual spectrum our voice and our emotion and our power behind it must have the greatest creational power that matches us so our vision and voice matches all of the audio and video that is for a TV production. How are you finding the broadest that, audience? Yeah, how are you finding that the production people are responding to that concept? Well, right in the beginning stages, we're reaching out to quite a few uh, people that are have the vision. Um, because honestly, you can find people that have the equipment. Uh, they're they're all out there. You can even go hire you know news crews that are sitting around doing nothing to do it. But if you don't have the person that has the the technical skills of directing, and knowing how one vision of directing translates to something in the editing room, so they can put together the vision, 
you know, with vision is they need us, they understand us, they know what the energies of us is, and want to give the accurate description of us on the emotional level, because TV is about emotions. It's mm -hmm. always about emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a situation where you would be just in, in one location being interviewed or speaking with people or doing readings, or is it going to be different locations and different episodes? Is that, is that the sort of thing well, you have in mind? There's multiple concepts, one which is a bus tour across America where both Nikki and I manifest direct in front of people and allow the one degree of separation for people to come and meet us, and we show what our skills are. I mean, people that know us, I mean, you've seen it in front of, you know, the radio eyes mm -hmm. of us just do things that are amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, we can put that on video. All of us are manifesting co-creators, you know, from Anelia to Franco to me to Nikki to even you and Lance. We all, we all have the capability of doing it. It's just a matter of putting it so the video format shows what it is that we're doing and people can get catch the subtleties of what's going on in reality around us. Mm. Yeah, that would be uh, actually quite a challenge for a director to right. do that and, and really get the message across. So nope. fingers crossed you'll find you'll, that, that you'll synchronistically find the right people simply by intending and yeah. putting that in your Also, if you don't do a reality series, you do a docudrama. You know, you mm -hmm. say you get a deal for 10 episodes. You know, it's usually like the industry number or three episodes or five episodes. How do you show what we are in that time? And that's, that's the vision of the director who knows how special effects and knows the technical things behind special effects that can put a production paperwork together. So all the people in the production know what it is the vision is. It's the actual technical translation of who we are into TV format. The amount of work that you put out on radio since you began, which is probably around about a year ago now, how many hundred hours would you say you've done? 1,500 hours. So has, has anybody concerned with the, with the effort you're now doing listened to enough of that to really get it? Um, quite a few have listened to it. As for getting it, that's the thing. Some days they get it for three or four weeks at a time, and then the reality pulls them back in, and then they don't get it for four or five weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of creating energy that's different than this reality because each person has to process the information. That's why coming down to, to you know, Ascension 101, what is fear, what is limitation, what is expectation, and learning how to process those energies in your physical body, your spiritual body, your emotional body, so that you can find remedy and resolve to all of those things that don't add up to something the reality is telling you isn't real or is real. Mm. Yeah, well, the reality. I recommend uh, Anelia Ben's Ascension 101 workshop. It's all of the absolute basics when it comes to processing energies of, of the reality. You know, both Nikki and I, as hosts, we present information that is it is tough beef jerky to chew on for a while. Mm. Well, it doesn't need to be tough. If you listen to the information and understand the fear processing tools, the expectation tools, and the limitation tools, and you go through that simple Ascension 101 course, which is like a three-day or four-day course, and it's all free, it's all online at ascension101.com, or you can type in Anelia Benz, and it spells it out exactly. And she has other courses you can take on relationships, on business, on finance. All of those there are there for tools so people can put in their toolbox to process reality energy in whatever format that it manifests in front of you. Mm. Yeah, Anelia's material is particularly, um, well, uh, look, easy easy to use wouldn't be quite the right term. It's user-friendly. User-friendly, exactly, exactly. I mean, you still have to, you have to physically do it, you have to physically go through the process, but she has a really gentle way of doing things is probably the best way to describe it. It's it's um, very feminine energy and really enjoyable to do. Actually, I've done a, a number of her bits and pieces, particularly the fear processing. That was um, that's always been quite useful because uh, there's there's nothing that the system does fear best. It's what it does. It's their main tool for hurting us about the place. It's their sniper weapon. Yep, and they just they just ping us off one by one. Yep, and. Um, 
once you're aware of that game and once you've got a tool to actually use with it, as soon as you recognise that, that particular effect coming in, you can just uh, process it the way that the way that you learn from her fear processing stuff. You just got to make it into a new habit. In fact, a lot of the a lot of this material, Andrew, a lot of the a lot of the shifts in people's thinking and perspective, a lot of it is about habit breaking. Have we lost you? And you know, uh, Chris, a lot of times, you know, it, it's taken a lifetime, right? Whether you're in your 30s, 20s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's, it takes a lot of time to uh, get to where you're at, accumulating programming, all the complexity of fear um, in your life. So every time we face with the negativity, we tend to falter back into that, you know, low L frequency. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I create my product where it helps you sustain that high frequency as much as possible. So then you can deal with a lot of these deprogramming until you're finally finished, you know, finish um, deprogramming different chapters of your life. Mm. Indeed. It's, it's, something. it's very important to stay at a high frequency. Yeah, and Andrew, Andrew already alluded to sort of falling in and out of the shift. It's, it's, it's literally uh, breaking that habit of, of the, res the programmed response that's been in you for decades and decades. And it's really, really something you have to work out, like breaking any habit, like an eating habit, drinking habit, smoking habit, any habit. You know, it takes many, many days of the new behavior to actually break that habit. Right. And the programming that we've received is particularly deep. I mean, it runs really deep. It takes quite a while of conscious effort to actually really get on top of it. Some people yes. do it more easily than others, yes. and that's fine. Yeah, and it, it's, it's a lifetime process, but for me, is I don't have lifetime. You know, so I emerge myself in all sorts of things. I mean, even even to jump in the cold ocean water at 50 Fahrenheit, in, you know, during the winter season, mm -hmm. so then I could deprogram myself. Yeah, sometimes you do have to shock the body and say, get get yourself together and change this program now. You see what I mean? Yep. So, and that's like, that's called like resetting and um, programming. And, you know, Andrew talked about purging. You know, I, uh, the only thing with purging is I want to caution those I, out there, whenever you're going through purging on the physical level, on the body temperature, physical level, uh, physical endurance or, um, you know, colonic and all those things, just assess your physical body first. Make sure that your body can handle it. Okay, because otherwise it'll shock the body, mm. and then you can't handle, and then you can it, it can cause you harm and get sick. You want to be able to handle it, and part of it is also making sure that you have the you are taking the responsibility to take care of yourself when you put yourself through the purging and and um, resetting. Because anticipate that yeah you're gonna you may get sick. You don't want to, you know, uh, depend on other people and make them expect them to come and take care of you, you know. So now that you are aware of what to anticipate, just be aware of it and don't put all that hardship workload on other people and make them their responsibility to take care of you. As an individual human being, we have to learn how to take care of um, ourselves and making that as our own responsibility and not put it on other people. Mm. And if they want to help, that's great, but not as an expectation. Indeed. We're moving into a time where we're taking back responsibility for every aspect of us, and, and that's just one more part of it. Now, mm. Andrew's audio dropped out there. I think he's back, Andrew. Actually, you've just gone very, very muffled. Just to speak again. We can't hear. Okay, it sounds like it might be, if, if you were using a headset, I, it sounds like it might have reverted back to the laptop because I can hear the hand movements far more clearly than your voice, so something's going on there. Maybe we'll have to call them. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew, that's, it sounds like a physical, a physical microphone issue, whether the microphone's not working or un unplugged. We can hear you very faintly, but it's, uh, yeah. we're, we're hearing the noises as you touch the laptop very distinctly. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's very muffled. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
Um, what I might do is I'll drop you off and, uh, and pull you back in and see if that works. Mm. Have to love live radio, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would yeah. make sense to go to television. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure that that would be uh, any less complicated. Uh, Andrew, are you back in? Yeah, can you hear me now? No. No, it sounds like you've actually um, got a pillow over your mouth at the moment. Mm. Yep. Don't think it's interference, Nikki. At this stage, I think it's just a technical issue. I mean, I, yeah. I would love to just do one show where there wasn't, you know, a dropout or <laughs> an audio issue. Um, Is it always know. like that with us, or it, uh, with um, all your other guests too? It's the other, the other, the other guests tend to be just straight ordinary technical problems. I mean, you guys get hammered by by whoever out there is is trying to stop this information from coming out. So that just adds another layer to it. But mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, for instance, yesterday I was talking to um, a gentleman from New, New Zealand called Anoka Shiva. Had a really great conversation about communities. And uh, for those that are listening, that also listen to the long conversation. Um, uh, on uh, okay, it's Thursdays in Australia, Wednesdays in the United States. Uh, had a great conversation about communities and and what's important and what's not. He's had a lifetime of experience with alternative communities, and we're continuing that next week because mm. we really need to get more information. And uh, Andrew, I might have to call you on the cell. I think that sounds like we might not be able to get past whatever's just happened to your system. Yep, not getting any audio at all at this stage. Okay, I can see the response in the room. I'll just hang that up and... Uh, whew, one thing I forgot to ask him um, is which mobile. So I will just ask him that question. There's a, there's a couple of different choices I can make here. Uh, probably it will be... Um, this one. One of the good things, Nikki, is that the, uh, the Skype charges for mobiles in the United States are actually very low compared to here. So I can call someone in the United States. Hello, Helene. Yes, hi. Hi, Helena. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? We're really good. We're actually live on the air. We're just trying to track down Andrew uh, via a mobile. I just realized he's probably not with you. He is not. He said, um, am I live? Am I on the radio right oh, now? Yes, I you are. Give you a number. Oh, no, actually, he's, okay, just, so. he's, he's, just been, he's just given me the number. So, so good. nice to talk to you. Oh, nice to talk to you all. Everybody have a great day, and I'm glad you found him. <laughs> yeah, we, we it was running fine as usual, and then it then it dropped out. So we're just setting it up again. <laughs> Thanks, Helene. All right. Cheers. Bye. Thanks so much. Have a great Bye, show. Bye, yeah. everyone. Okay, that mystery solved there. So let's just. Um, Do you see the number on the screen? Chris? Yeah, I've got the number there. I'm just going to uh, let me see. I have to actually set that up as a quick contact. Uh, I'll just give that the name Andrew and make sure it's in the United States so it doesn't try and dial from somewhere else in the world. And then we will just quickly dial it. And you know, Chris, okay. I can't wait till you uh, start continue um, talking about um, that gentleman you brought up earlier, and uh, about the the basic of uh, community and uh, in the alternative uh, lifestyle. And I know I have a lot to contribute to that <laughs> in terms of establishing relationship between um, people, and that what is the ultimate key in the surviving of the alternative uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that goes for all the light workers too, and the people that, who are not awakened. Yeah, well, the interesting. 
Nikki, I've just, uh, although I've added that uh, phone number in, just give me a minute to actually sure. uh, find that contact. Do you want to talk about community for just a minute? Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. And uh, the community that I'm referring to is basically putting, you know, uh, soul family together, light workers, wh whoever you want to do. The key, basic key here in a nutshell is establishing boundaries. Boundaries for integrity, respecting each other's differences um, is, is vital in the survival of any time you put people together and putting people, people have their own differences and that has to be respected. When that is not in place, nothing can survive. And Chris and I had talked about this last night about this uh, Canadian, um, um, I think it was a government or private uh, How you company. Doing? Yeah. Oh, good. We're good. We're, he's, he's, he is back here. Yeah, we just st started a slightly different conversation, Andrew, just to fill in for a moment while you were. But look, look, let's continue that thought later, Nikki, at some point. Yeah, let's do that. Because it's, it's, a, very important, it's a very important aspect of, of forming new communities, and uh, it needs to be spoken of. But we've got Andrew back. Not sure what happened to your audio, Andrew. It was like you'd um, basically put a pillow over the microphone. The audio card on the computer I'm sitting on all of a sudden disengaged. It said it can no longer set sense your audio card. Hmm, interesting. Just technical failure, or is there some interference going on there? Um, I think a little both. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't do anything other than than reach for a cup of water. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, as long as yeah, a friend of mine dumped a whole cup of water on her laptop the other day. She was not happy. Yeah. Not happy. There you go. She's having to do all sorts of strange things to make it work. So we were talking about the um, the process you're going through in LA of finding the right kind of people to put forth uh, a real television version of what we're doing on these radio shows. That's right. And to do that, you have to find the people with the vision, and then the people with the vision have to understand the material. And then once they understand the material, they translate it to direct to TV linguistics technical speak so that the cameraman knows where to set up, what kind of shoots to do, so that the makeup people know how to make the person look, how to make the room look. So you're presenting all of the visual and emotional cues. Mm. It's just another movie. Well, no, it's it another isn't just another reality movie. It's, TV, but it's, it's not. It's in, that's the it's thing. It's spiritual form. Mm. That's, that's the theme. That's the genre we're talking about. But it's, it's an introduction. Still but it's it's just an introduction. Mm -hmm. Yep, sounds like it's going to be uh, a different kind of task for those folks down in Hollywood anyway. How are you finding that the... Have you spoken to anybody, for instance, who's never heard of you? Or are they all people that have actually had experiences oh, with the material? I've spoken to quite a few that have never heard of me. Mm -hmm. And for them, can they sell it or not? That's really what it comes down to. We won't go to anyone that doesn't have the ability to sell it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So that's that's the the look at the process there. If you mm. can't sell it, you continue to do what you do is make as much noise, as much audio, as much archives as you can, and you continue until the industry has people that can sell a concept that's on the forbidden or the taboo list. Yes. Has any of that come up yet? Yes. That has come up. Uh-huh. And how did it manifest? The, the, you know, people just not interested. People ex ex verbally no, expressing it. It's first impression. Mm -hmm. it always comes down to the first impressions. Anything that's on the taboo list or the forbidden list, as soon as you start dancing around the words that says this is taboo, that this is forbidden, it's first impression. Can your first impression break through that fear that they have of the taboo list? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, will they present something that they want to sell and risk their reputation in one pitch? That's the fear. Mm. Interesting. Yes, it would be. Now, Nikki, you've had a fair bit of experience in this field. Um, well, yes, I, I've, I have my fair share of uh, having uh, friends and connection with the Hollywood people. And I, I, I must add that the Hollywood people are not as um, close-minded as you think. I mean, you look at the uh, TV show Medium, you know, that's, that's all about psychic, a lady who's psychic and, and being using it, integrated in, the re in reality, which mm -hmm. is, you know, she was a detective, 
you know, there's other show like Charms, even though it's on, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just uh, uh, for, for fun, you know, uh, Charm, that's another good one that was on, talked a lot about witches and metaphysics, you know, and it was fantastic, that show ran for a very long time, so was that show Medium, okay, mm -hmm. so I, I know the producer, and he's out here in the Los Angeles, and, you know, another Jewish guy, of course, <laughs> connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, the, uh, and the, um, the movie, Avatar, that's another spiritual movie. It's not just about alien looking some world. You know, it's all about interpretation. If you're quite awake and aware, you know it's a lot about spirituality mm -hmm. and, and some other movies. You know, so well, and, definitely, and there's definitely. I hear what you're saying. There's definitely people around Hollywood who um, yeah. who would be on this page. But um, yeah, if they have a yeah. fear of of essentially uh, it affecting their own reputation when they try right. to pitch it, uh, then you know that's that is. Yeah, and, and then you look at you look at people like Steven Spielberg. He's Jewish, and you know Jordan Maxwell was invited to his house and walked into his library on accident. And found he has this amazing mystic book on the Kabbalah and some other things. And it makes you wonder, what is he doing? Apparently, if, if you are a, a, a great producer at his caliber, you have to be doing some form of psychic, intuitive, metaphysic work. You can't just be creative. Creativity goes hand in hand with intuition. Okay? Mm -hmm. It goes hand in hand. That's why, um, what's his name, Kirk Corbain and all those musicians, they're very intuitive people. You have to be able to tune in on, on the spiritual level to be able to express a, uh, how they're feeling at that level. Okay? All this creativity comes out. People who are not creative, most likely they're not intuitive. Mm. Once you open that up, you're more creative. So a lot of times the Hollywood people are open to it. It's just it, it's about how to make it where it's tastefully accepted and convey the right messages. You look at that uh, movie Contact, you know, Contact well, that was actually influenced by uh, what's his name, David Wilcox, you know, mm -hmm. and he comes off from you know spiritual aspect as well. You know, being involved with ET contact and what have you. So there's a lot out there in the movie industry with underlying hidden messages of the metaphysics spiritual world. Well, we're about to do something that um, that uh, would really turn their heads. Had they be had, were they listening? Okay, so um, Andrew, you you saw my message that Nikki Nikki wanted to do an on-air reading today. Um. Yeah. Uh, I remember doing. I thought that we were going to do that um, as a as a coming out kind of whole episode thing. Right, but we uh, do. You want to just do like a um, uh, an an intro that we talked about an intro, and then we'll uh, continue uh, on the full force on the on the teleseminar. I mean, it, it's um, up to you. It's up to I you. I haven't set any of those dates, so it would be better that if we dedicated a show to it coming out instead of just an hour. Because mm -hmm. um, then we can start from the beginning and have Chris ask the questions at the time because the flow of the three of us, I can do the reading and you can do the answering and Chris can do the questioning, which gives us the two hours and then you go full core on, on, on the, on the teleseminar. Mm -hmm. You think it will require a teleseminar as well? Absolutely. She's got a lot to say. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, would you would you um, like to do any of it today, or do you want to actually follow that plan? Um, well, there are some other things that I'd like to talk about. I mean, I mean, we should finish up a lot of the subject matters that we we finished before um, the nine eleven, um, the finishing up of the the ED uh, the erectile dysfunction and PMS. There was quite a few questions, and I know there's a tremendous amount of people waiting to ask us questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we owe it to our audience before we, we, we show the next part of who we are, what we are, and what we do is we give them their opportunity to resolve their questions that they have. So, you know, people can begin to make links of this show, this show, and this show helps you understand this and this. This is where Nikki and Andrew talk about sacred masculine and feminine. This is where Nikki talks about her cones and let the audience be the ones that share the information as well as, as, well as the archives. Mm -hmm. I think that's just as important to tie up all of those ends before we show who we are, yep. what we are, what we're doing. 
Well, I, to be honest, I, I, I think Nikki deserves uh, uh, a really, really concentrated showing. So right. given that we're about an hour into the show, and uh, we have an hour, just an hour left. Is that okay with you, Nika? We'll just finish off the, the loose ends that we have at the moment, and and give you a give you a full burst next week, followed by a teleseminar. Um, sure. So um, let's let's proceed then with the 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 most outstanding loose end that we've got is the continuation of the last little bits of human sexuality that Andrew just mentioned. And the first on the list was actually PMS. Do you want to start off on that, Nikki? Um, PMS. That's when the Stargate shuts down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Hence the cramps. But, you know, you can still have babies, though. So it still can be reactivated. So, so P of the PMS symptoms of the Stargate shutting down, are you talking about menopause or PMS? Menopause. Menopause, okay. And the, the PMS, the monthly pains? Yes. Yes, that's when the physical body, now you're dealing with cellular level, you know, it, it needs certain nutrients to be able to function uh, without pain and mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. For example, some people um, have um, pain when they menstruate, that's when they're lacking, you know, um, supplements like uh, evening primrose, they'll need uh, extra vitamin E, you know, uh, calciums, uh, potassiums. Because mm -hmm. when, when you're losing blood, you know, the body has to make blood in order to excrete blood, mm -hmm. okay, as a replacement. Yeah, well, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, women who are having PMS difficulty essentially are taking, uh, taking drugs to either just relieve the pain or relieve the cramps or both, not necessarily boosting themselves up with uh, the right nutrients. Exactly. They're actually lacking mm -hmm. or, yeah, lacking. A lot of time it's lacking and uh, so they're not properly um, providing nutrients to the body. You know, even taking care of themselves um, just by having, you know, a salt bath, mm -hmm. that helps. That helps to allevi alleviate the, uh, the muscle spasm. The muscle spasm because it's lacking nutrients like mm -hmm. salt, potassium, so you can actually, uh, if you've got the right nutrients, you can actually minimize, minimize yeah. the, the pain as well as the replacing the blood. Yeah, definitely. Yep, yep. Well, that sounds like good advice. Andrew, did you have anything to add to PMS? Um, as the Stargate closes down, it is a woman's right and natural process to go back into herself and understand what the expression of that energy is. Um, a menstrual cycle has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and during that menstrual cycle is a letting go, a closing down, and a reopening of the, of the lotus flower of energy that's a part of those sacred organs. And as the, the uh, stargate is setting down, it is where the woman who connects through all of her chakra system and brings her sentience into that part of the stargate so that her sentience becomes part of the eye of the needle and it opens herself up to the, to the great grandmothers who are running this world all the other sacred feminines that are out there. There's a truly spiritual process in reconnecting to your moon cycle, and it requires each individual woman to reconnect at that level and find the compassion for themselves to reconnect to what the energy of that womb gate is. Mm. And it completes a spiritual circuit that, that is, can only be understood by the experience of it on a monthly basis. Because every month, you are expressing something different of the Earth Mother, her macro expression through your micro-menstrual cycle. And your micro-menstrual cycle helps the Earth understand the greater macro of what's going on as a species of who we are. So the more time, effort, and energy you put into your own personal menstrual cycle, separate of the drugs that you take, the spiritual input and the spiritual output of that womb gate is increasing and raises your vibration even more. What sort of practices were carried out in, in past times to engage the woman in the spiritual aspect of that cycle? Well, during their moon cycle, they weren't required to work. Somebody took care of their children mm -hmm. if they needed to. They would literally 
do the spiritual part of it. They mm-hmm. go to places of energy so that during their, their menstrual cycle, they could pray, meditate, connect to what makes them a woman, connect to what was leading them towards male energy, or do whatever was needed to done to maintain the connection to the stargate. Mm-hmm. You know, Earth herself has menstrual cycles. And when a woman aligns her menstrual cycle to her spirit and aligns that spirit menstrual cycle to the earth, they are what's known as operating in the stargate or womb gate of the great grandmothers, the 13 grandmothers that are the founding sacred feminines that brought the feminine lineage to this world. And those were the placeholders of energy before our species took off into many different DNA lineages. And all of those grandmothers still exist in Earth's dream times. That's what the 13 grandmothers of the 13 clans were about. So that any woman that has a womb gate that still is capable of connecting to it can connect to the 13 grandmothers' wisdom. Now, the 13 grandmothers, um, how far back in the history of this planet are we actually talking about? The founding, the very founding of the original seventh dimensional galactic seed planet, the 13 grandmothers, that instead of forming planets themselves, chose to be high powerful sentient sacred phenomena on the surface of earth as co-sisters of the planet because earth's purpose was to create brand new life to whole new planetary planets and galaxies earth was meant to not be one planet to be many planets it was meant to give litters of itself one planet cannot fill up the whole galaxy but thousands can earth was just the primal beginning until it's separated into multiple planets and can see dozens of solar systems in a single day because there's multiple versions of it. And the 13 grandmothers were meant to take over some of the other productions that were Earth, that were Earth 2, Earth 18, Earth 44. But Earth Mother as the center was separating herself so that the 13 grandmothers energy makes a complete link dreamtime world between all of the different Earths in the creation and co-creation field for those new galaxies that have brand new planets that have blank Akashic records so that they can invite souls to come and live through an experience. So how many Earths are there at the moment in the galaxy? 64, but they're all stuck right here. Now there was one Earth that separated off and which is beginning the separation of two worlds, so the two dream time densities begin separating. So there's 77, but technically there's 78. And as, as we go through more of the separation of the two worlds in the dream time, and the separation of densities between the older souls, the middle age, and the younger souls, and as soul families begin to reform, there'll be a third, fourth, and fifth Earth, as well as a third, fourth, and fifth Mars, a third, fourth, and fifth Jupiter and Venus, until everything's separated down to its mel- mel- harmonic keys, if you're on the low scale, you're on the high scale, or if you're vibrating with another species, you'll begin your separation of density, and your soul, your highest soul, will be giving, begin to dream in more than one sacred feminine energy. It'll have Earth Mother, and then Earth Mother is linked to the dream times of millions of other worlds. So wherever your home world is, you Earth will act as the conduit to link you to the dream time world of another world you lived on before you came here and were either trapped or stuck in a set of agreements you didn't fully understand. And then you'll be able to literally dream the hot with the sentient of another planet and begin to find remedy and resolve in the spiritual court to understand, are you a multidimensional being with 200 parts or are you a multidimensional being with three parts? Are you 95 parts or are you a completely whole and fully invested in Earth? And if so, are you ready to end your contracts with Earth so to continue your journey to the next experience? So all of these worlds are coming together. Earth is the conduit to millions of other dream worlds of other planets. And Earth can separate into thousands if it wants to. But it must finish its healing with those people that are contracted to be its surface graduation timeline so we may all find remedy and resolve to the last 54 million years of technology, spiritual technology that's, that's prevented Earth's proper menstrual cycles and birthing cycles. Separate of the surface people, Earth is a great birther, great birther. And that's what it's going to be returned to. And the, those are that of the seven future generations of our world are already lined up to come in. It's a matter of us taking off the cork, taking off the facade reality, coming into our power, describing who and what all the source streams are, and begin teaching people you have more choices than what the facade offers. And as you begin to make your choices, Earth itself will create the worlds you need to, to step into or a stepping point into another world where you wish to continue experience in which you left 
because people are going to start gaining 10 or 15 or 18 percent of some of their information of their past lives and it'll be up to them to process through what that all means to determine where they want to go in their in their new adventure the the information that will come in about their past lives that'll be in dream time correct in dream time and that dream time is when they're linked up to the earth mother correct so and that's what the awakening is shedding the sacred geometry dream time catcher cities and returning to earth dreaming mind so we can be a global dream time society once again the original grandmothers were they physical beings or, or they were physical spiritual? beings who became energy beings and then bonded with the very foundational crust of earth so that they were one degree of separation of Earth's soul embedded into the crust, embedded into the Akashic record, embedded to every crystalline form of energy and sentience that was there to be a, a representation of, of how to have nurturing, mothering energy. And the 13 grandmothers are a part of Earth's dreaming world because they are her 13 sisters who chose to be a part of a project that was to seed life to whole new worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm. whole new galaxies yeah it's, it's the greatest adventure for those 14 sisters mm. yeah I mean it sounds like they they gave up their physical lives to become part of this correct mm. the the uh, indigenous here in Australia talk of the grandmothers and is, is that who they're referring to because I suspect yes. it is yeah because they're they're very aware of that then and that's part, yeah. certainly that's part of many their... indigenous cultures all over the world mm and the the female menstrual cycle is i guess one of the things that is held in place by that energy by that grandmother energy correct that's why women who stick around each other their menstrual cycles will start to go together and that's how the 13 grandmothers function through us mm. they're lying to you for a reason you're sisters you're 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 all womb gate holders you're all star gate holders whatever you want to call it and that's one of the greatest honors in this universe. Hmm. And I've talked about, you know, the penis with the third eye and the tip. But if you look at the Stargate and you look at the, th the, p the third eye and the penis, you have perfect conception. Hmm. It requires a spiritual person with all the proper tools in a high vibration world to reach into the astral world and find the most perfect spirit to take over your lineage. And that's what the seven future generations that we're offering to Earth now is. Mm. If only we could actually do that at this point. But we've lost that the ability is, at this stage. We can. Mm -hmm. The thing is, are there enough couples that are consciousness explorers that are going to try the woman reconnecting to her menstrual cycle, reconnecting to the grandmothers, and the men seeking out places of power which is like men going to pollinate a flower and bringing that flower energy back to the woman so they have an even stronger sacred feminine connection. And they lay in union, and that union isn't sexual. It is deeply spiritual as they begin the telepathic bonding so that they can find that child in that astral world. Mm. You know, remote viewing and third eye opening is so much what people are focused on when, in fact, it isn't about your third eye opening. It's about knowing. Women know when they're pregnant. They know when it's the right child. The men know also. Getting back to that knowing is the biggest leap of faith. Hmm. Yeah, it's a state of mind that, again, we're just not taught to actually even... We, well, we don't even know it's a, of its existence. That's right. It's, it's and just that's not what in the, it's Los not Angeles in the is mind. about. Source. Hmm. What is the source? You know, there are so many people that I've met, and Kelly and I have talked to this, they have no idea what even the word ascension means. You know, if we're going to introduce this to the public, you know, our message is simple. To introduce it to the public, it has to be even simpler. Mm. You know, we've done 80 plus hours of galactic history, and Nikki's been a part of a lot of it. And there's stuff that Nikki says that only women get. And there's stuff I say only men get. And when you translate to a larger audience, we have to transcend that. Mm. And by transcending that, we all don't need a single sex to have unity consciousness. We just need the tools for each individual to experience it on their own because you can't tell them what the experience is. They literally have to know the experience to understand it. Nikki, your, your entire history is in the, the huge feminine energy of Kuan Yin. Yes. So your connection to the grandmothers must be very, very intense. Yes, very intense. 
Mm. I am very connected to Mother Earth to a point where I, I, um, I'm against uh, including for light workers or um, people to, or just people in general, to dig into her womb and uh, extracting crystals out of her womb because she needed that as part of her consciousness. Mm. You well, know, Andrew, it, it, it holds it holds her her memory of of you know what's going on 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 her and in her within her as well. Mm. Yeah, what what Dick is referring to is a part of a discussion we had yesterday about the aggressive mining of crystals from the yes. earth. When you know Andrew just pointed out the grandmothers are invested in in the crystalline structure of earth. So when you yes. remove those and repurpose them, you're actually taking part of that memory out of out yes, of right. the planet what you're saying is the next this is just another way to understand our world was invaded spiritually mm. so the 3d representation is going to mine crystals but at the same time the grandmothers and the earth mother are going to be finding people that the crystals that are mined to can go to to create healing it's all interactive it's all connected it's all interconnected mm -hmm. you know one one view never fits. It's all views that fit. And that's what the 13 grandmothers have always been saying. We all come together in a global dream time society. Mm. Where Earth and the 13 grandmothers set up the structure of peace, love, unity, respect, harmony. Mm. And from there, we create our own reality bubbles in those basics understandings that the nurturing spirit of the 13 grandmothers and the Earth Mother are a part of every aspect of our vibrational experience. Therefore, there will be no good and evil anymore. It'll just be experience. Mm. Yeah, there's a judgment uh, in, <coughs> uh, caught up in, in, in that good versus evil that um, is something else that we need to drop out of our day-to-day day-to-day -day thought patterns it's become a habit as well and Nikki as far as the, the the monthly menstrual cycle is concerned the 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 spiritual act of reconnecting with the grand the 13 grandmother energy uh, is this is there some kind of uh, thought process ritual um, procedure that that people who've never practiced that before can simply start to get some leverage on what that really means to them is there some some process of course they can do? Chris the first two weeks or one week before when a woman menstruates, it is a crucial time where she goes into, I would want to say, more an isolation. Okay, now that's not quite practical in some situation because some of us live with parents, friends, or uh, have children and family. So, but finding that time for yourself is vital. This is where you are highly, highly intuitive as a woman. Mm. Okay. Actually, I have noticed that myself. There's a. Um well, men, as men, you have your cycle too. But as a woman, before you literally menstruate, uh, you you are your psychic ability is like so heightened. Yeah. Okay, and that is when you connect. You want to go in into meditation. You want to connect with Mother Earth, and literally, you can feel her energy and become part of Mother Earth if you allow it. And when you surrender, you the key here is surrendering. Mhm. Mm mhm. Yeah. What I was. Uh I didn't express that actually very accurately, but I, what I, I have actually noticed that in females that there's a certain part of their cycle where they they do actually become more intuitive. You can actually yes. you can really see it, yeah. uh, and uh, um, that expresses itself in the relationship that you have with them. If you've ever ever been with someone for a long time, um, and you you notice that at certain times of month they're very intense. Yes. And they, they can, you know, pretty much read your mind, <laughs> as yes. it were. And, you know, that's that's obviously part of it. Interesting, because I'd never, I was sort of aware of that it was part of the cycle, but I hadn't really connected it to the, it's probably the Stargate going into, um, you know, a, a mode of either greater activity or just shifting. Yes, and, and during this process is also when her um, blood pressure goes up, uh, her blood, red blood cell production goes up as well. There's a tons of energy being produced to open up that stargate because it's it's like before the stargate opens, you know, to allow the soul to come through, the body is like preparing itself and then it checks, okay, 
is there a sperm in there? Is there any unity of sperm and uh, uh, ov an ovum and then, then, you know, to allow the next process? If it doesn't, so it takes energy to open it up, and then when it said, nope, it's negative, it's a no-go. So then after, then she, it shuts down, then she menstruates it out. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? That's all part of the energy process, and the body has to excrete that, excrete, eliminate all those blood supplies that's being produced in your bones, skeletal structure, mm -hmm. okay? So um, for a woman, it, it is vital that she takes care of herself and, um, and becoming much more aware in her state of mind. And, and then, oh my goodness, on a different level, on the physical level, is that hormones, okay? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, goodness, it can drive you crazy, mm -hmm. okay? And, and as a woman, um, you know, she, she can uh, trigger her jealousy, uh, her insecurity, uh, name it. All of that will come out as well because that's what hormone does. It triggers you on the mental and the emotional aspect. Mm, so looking. as a woman, it's, 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 it can be challenging. Well, <laughs> it's as a, a gift and a curse. <laughs> yeah, as, exactly. Well, it's in fact, in some, it's actually called the curse by some women. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as, a, as a male who's actually, you know, I've lived with females, lived with, there's pretty much been always uh, a female in my life of one form or another, and uh, uh, the, the uh, roller coaster ride of emotions is very well known to us. Yeah. You know, we, it's we, intense we, energy. Very intense, very intense. Well, the way you resolve that is this, okay? Uh, you do have to go get your hormone panel checked. You've got to go get your hormone panel checked. It doesn't cost that much for maybe about $100. You could do saliva or blood. Get that done. And uh, so you can check your hormone level, okay, and see where you're at. You can, that's the easy way out, okay? And then you can be on supplements. There are cream, topical cream you can put on. There are supplements you can take, food you can eat, like Napa cabbage, bok choy, things like that. And that goes for both men and women. However, there's another long way, and this is, this is by far the most natural way that we've lost um, uh, touch with, and that is going through meditation. If one, as a woman, can sit and meditate, she literally can can control her hormone level, her anger, her jealousy, her insecurity, all of that, mm. yeah, including the... her sexual uh, needs. Mm -hmm. You know, the heightening of, of everything is is amazingly uh, prevalent and obvious in, in the female cycle. And yeah, if, if meditation can actually help settle that down, better than drugs. Yeah, but it's not easy. Not everyone is, uh, can accomplish at that level. Yeah, you know, I mean, for intense. me, I, I can meditate eight hours a day. Mm. No problem. Hmm. You have to be at that level. Well, you wouldn't get much done, would you? <laughs> no. Well, you will get things done, but not in the 3D reality things done, but in other things, of course. Mm -hmm. All things can be done. You know, just what is it that you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah. But now you can't, can't be cleaning the kitchen and then go to movies, you know, all at the same time, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just one thing at a time exactly. that can be accomplished. But, well, yeah, meditation is, is, um, can control um, all of that. What this leads us to is is a discussion of, of menopause when this cycle closes down. Now, I, I just have a feeling that, and Andrew might want to comment on this, that when that starts to happen with um, with the female body, Andrew, in past times, was that was that sort of a cause for a celebration or or a grieving? What what was the the attitude to the closing down of the menstrual cycle later in life? in past well, times. That's the thing. The, the menstrual cycle closed down because the earth was being shut down. Oh, okay. Okay. I have something, something to read. I put a, a link here, a Facebook notes link uh, called Amalgamation Nation. This is something I wrote um, December 8th last year specifically for these times. Mm -hmm. And if people want to read it on their own, that's fine. But I'd like to give an opportunity to read this. This is about the sacred feminine. And I'm going to read this. The idea of a sacred space defines itself on many planes of existence. It represents the human need to have your possessions that help ground us in the world. Sacred space is the room we give ourselves to be. 
We learn at a young age about beliefs people hold to be true. We continue to learn about others' sacred space. At times we get confused about what is your sacred space and what is others' sacred space. It's time to mark your space with your essence, your love, and your human needs. It asks you to know who you have given permission to be in your sacred space. It asks you to tell those who are not welcome to leave. It asks you to stand up to your convictions and respect your sacred space. Enforce the rules you have set up. Release the rules that have allowed others to steal your ser the serenity of your sacred space. It asks you to honor the sacred point of view. You have been co-creating with Earth Mother. Drums mark the heartbeat of our Earth Mother. Constantly remind us who gave us birth. The rhythm of connection is the pulse of Mother, pulse of Mother Earth's heartbeat. It is the perfect reflection of our heart's expression of life on Mother Earth. The drum came to the children of Mother Earth during the second world of the first ice age. It was a time when the first generation generations of clans gathered around the fire for new discoveries. They shared these first fires with warmth and unity. The clans survived. During this time, the five races of the world connected with the heartbeat of Earth Mother. And I sp express that, heartbeat of Earth Mother. The clans learned Mother Earth was active in all their ceremonies, and Mother Earth was amongst the drum beats they created. They discovered a common, almost imperceptible rhythm which all ceremonies shared. They call this the heartbeat of Mother Earth. The plight of the female spiritual warrior is one of the most difficult paths to maintain true flight. Your womb cave yearns every new moon. It asks for a presence to help fill the void of apathy. If you seek out your womb cave with the light of truth, you'll discover a whole new reservoir of light, waiting for you to use its potential for healing and harmony. The potential, realized, will help you define who you choose to write spiritual text with. It will help you discover those who you have helped heal, even if you had no clue you've helped them heal. The air of truth is the spirit of the spiritual warrior clan. The arrow flies straight and true, quick and deadly when you aim to kill. The arrow speaks of ideas of brotherhood and sisterhood. You must armor yourself with good intent for those you wish to associate with. Drop those who no longer honor your path of sacred truth. Arrow says stay on the sacred path when the shadows of form of self show you alternate ways. The vision of the western bear, showing our communal thoughts, the womb cave we have and all have inside. The womb cave is our direct connection to the procreating force of life-driven life drive. Mother Bear teaches us how to protect our children and our livelihood. She is the protector spirit of all those who go through moon cycles. If you should require her instruction, look into your own womb cave and ask for her presence. While she sleeps in hibernation, dreaming this world of dream, dreaming this dream of our world, Bear is the great cyclical dreamer on many medicine spreads. Her presence signals the deep connection to the dream world. Mother Bear, she comes forward, taking the communal dream time talking stick. To become like Bear, you must be willing to enter the womb cave. Within the confines of the womb cave, you will discover the connection to the great mystery of life. The placenta of the void will nourish you with solutions and answers about living in harmony with the reoccurring questions and answers to life. Every being has the capacity to quiet the mind and enter the silence. Feminine-born spirits have an extra gift of the womb, the womb cave entrance. The feminine energies have guided mystics and shamans for countless generations. Now the present generation is perplexed with knowledge and disrespects their given rights. We, the mother bear, roll in silence. Respect your feminine side. Hear its cries and recycle those energies for your own life blessing. The power of knowing has invited you to enter the silence and become acquainted with the dream lodge of cyclical hibernation. This is the strength of bear. I offer it to you as my service to Earth Mother. Dream with me, dreamers, because our dreams await. Bear retreats from the dream lodge, preparing her long slumber in the womb cave before her new cubs are born. As Grandmother Moon is the weaver of the tides, so does a woman's moon cycle recount her monthly path. It is coded within the feminine DNA to be able to be tied to the passings of the seasons and to the movements of the sards stars. Within the cyclical connection is the expression of blood, representing the need for procreation. With communal medicine, we seek all. 
we ask all feminine spirits to retreat into your moon cycle when it begins. We ask this of you, for it is your nature to have quiet connection to go through the cycle. During these times, many become disjointed, disgruntled, unapproachable. These are all aspects of the moon lodge that signal why you need to recall your energies. It is woman's natural nature to express worry, heartbreak, despair, love, envy, hope, prayer for unborn children. By recalling these energies, we begin a process of recovery. The energy we send out returns with new fuel to power the next moon cycle. It is woman's responsibility to recall her spent energy each and every moon. When she finds herself unbalanced, the process of recalling has many names and many spiritual expressions and many ways of living in balance and harmony. It is, the overwhelming, it is overwhelming the number of feminine red road walkers that have forgotten their sacred right to recall their energy monthly. This disjunction of body, mind, and spirit creates dream weave wounds. And these wounds attract things, people, and energies that continue to sap the life force. A spiritual band-aid will never suffice. If your child was crying and in pain, you would respond. If your loved husband was dying, you'd be at his side. If a brother or sister was hurting, you'd respond. Yet, when your body hurts every month, you ignore it. When your body sends messages monthly, you forget. We, the communal source of our... <clears throat> I'm sorry, hold on a second, I lost my place. We, the communal source of Earth Mother, ask all feminine minds to relearn the responsibility of the Moon Lodge. It is your given right to recall the expressed energies of the mind and the body. When you are loving too much, your soul hurts. It's time to stop. When you've burned the candle at both ends and have no light left for ourselves, you can carry your own future in a spiritual cradle board. The cradle board holds the future generations of children and red road relations yet to come. By owning the responsibility of procreation, we learn to accept our responsibility of a life in balance. The vision grows as I learn and relearn the message. My understanding is childlike, so I decide, who are the white webs? Who are the visions? And this is when we understand faith is our direct link to the universal wisdom. Faith reminds us that we know more than we have heard, read, or studied. Faith reminds us we only have to look and listen and trust the love and wisdom of the universal spirit working through all of us. Faith does, not, faith does not require belief in a religion, only by learning to trust the love and intelligence working through you in all creation. The newfound trust will transform your perception and experience. You will find lessons and opportunities in every challenge. No matter what we feel or know, no matter what our potential gifts or talents are, only action brings them to life. Many of us understand concepts such as commitment, courage, and love, but we truly know only what we can do. Doing leads to understanding, and action turns knowledge into wisdom. Action just teaches us to become, overcome both inertia and impatience by acting on our courage, clear intentions, and commitment. Each and every action or inaction contains the seeds of its opposite. There is the time for action and the time of the action of inaction. So that is to women. It is your choice to do what you do with your menstrual cycle, whether you're in the three-dimensional world or the spiritual world, but it's about reconnecting and recalling your energy at every level, not just the spiritual level, not just the human level, but at your past, present, and future level, because that is your expression this life, to be procreating forces of life. Did I lose you? Actually, yes, I'm talking away. I was, I was, I had my eyes closed, and I was listening to to that piece. Very nice piece. And what I was trying to say, had I not been muted, was that's the sort of thought that needs to be put out, you know, by by schooling, you know, through the schools, through, uh, you know, for, from from mothers to daughters. And that was a really. It just shows you how strongly the feminine energy is woven into everything about us. Right. And, and the degree to which it's been ignored. And, uh, yeah, what did you feel about that piece, Nikki? Sorry, uh, I was on mute. <laughs> you too. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's the sort of thought that really should be out there because, you know, the, the, the female aspect is woven into absolutely everything about us. 
Well, in, in this society, the uh, when it comes to ceremonies, uh, sacred ceremony have been uh, taken away from us due to science and practicality. And uh, because of that, we, we've lost that tradition of uh, embracing the uh, feminine uh, sacred, um, you know, action, thought, thinking, process, uh, especially the word processing and embracing um, and within ourselves. And so, you know, that's why having and being around Native American Indians or tribal um, communities, they still practice those things. So as a female in those tribal communities, smaller community, definitely that is something that um, as a woman, you, they have more equal base with a man. With, or just say men in general in the, yeah. within their community in that context, and so in. But in this society, it's completely, um, you know, it's outrun by patriotic society. Yeah, the the um, the whole the whole idea, particularly with with women being put into the workforce, it's really taken away the opportunity to, yes. to really contemplate. Even just going into contemplation during that period and having quiet time would would make a huge difference. But no, they, they have to go off to work. Yeah, and, and let, let me go a little bit deep on the being in the quiet time. Being quiet time doesn't mean you are involved in around people that only uh, you're subjecting your energy into somebody else because during this quiet time, this is when one pr uh, process quite a lot of information that can be miscued and misunderstood and, and, and it can be a blow up. And that is something you don't want to do is definitely to uh, dump all your emotion into uh, within the community it's it's not right that is why within tradition you go out in solitude because it is a safe place where you go and dump and process your emotions mm. I wanted to make that clear because otherwise people will go around dumping emotion on each other yeah so and there's is... a difference between dumping it on somebody else or they subjecting themselves into your energy field there's a yeah. difference because everyone is entitled to have negative thoughts and positive thoughts because that is in human um, brain polarity functioning and program. But it's when you can contain yourself, it's different than somebody else subjecting their energy into your field or you subjecting your emotion and negativity into somebody else's. There's a difference. And you only have to look at the degree to which the subject of the, the clash between male and female, while that part of the, the female cycle is going on, it, it gets a lot of, uh, of airplay uh, in, in media, okay, just as part, it becomes you know, part of the theme of the male-female relationship. And it needn't be that way. It's just that we don't actually deal with it properly. And in fact... And, and yeah, and the right, talk about not dealing properly, Chris, and that's true. That's why, like I said, go into isolation. That is the proper, safe way to process. A lot of times the drama that you see on television that's played out, you know, in the, what is it, the daily drama, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, soap opera, it's all like, in, in, that is like, uh, injection of a massive hormone on a daily basis because everybody is so dramatic on television. That's why it's called the soap opera. Yes. Yes, indeed. In fact, one of, the, one of the aspects of what Andrew just read out is it needs to be heard as much by the males as the females because they both need their own understandings of what's actually going on here. Because if you're going to be in a family situation and you want to actually um, practice you know, being being in that family situation correctly, you have to. Not only does the does the female actually have to take that space, be in solitude, but the others around her need to understand that and give her that space to be in. Exactly. So it giving can't, her that space. Yeah, she's not yes. just taking the space that it's just it's just part or of what the family does. Or subjecting their their energy into their space. Yeah, it's just part of the process for the family. It's not just about the females. So many, many lessons to be learned here. And that also has to be taught to the uh, the new generation that's coming out. Mm -hmm. There has to be bring back of uh, the ceremony to uh, embrace the sacred uh, feminine uh, process in her moon cycle. That has to be brought back mm -hmm. because we, right. we have no tradition for that. So every time a woman goes into cycle, it's like, yeah, whatever, she's on PMS. 
Mm, that's the yeah, acknowledgement. That's, why, that's, why that's all the acknowledgement have, a woman gets nowadays. Well, she's that's, why women have to, <laughs> that's why women have to come together as sisters to form ceremonies. And then individuals can go off and do their own part of the ceremonies after the sisterhood ceremony. That's just as vital as the teaching that the 13 grandmothers are saying. The healing process will never really make you look at your menstrual cycle as a spiritual monthly expression of feminine need. You must connect to yourself during these cycles, find ways to achieve meditative states during these times. For the divine feminine energy is working with you as a blood of life. It is expressed and evolved cyclically. It's your duty to learn meditative imagery that helps you define your womb cave as clean, clear, and well taken care of. Creative meditative dialogue with your womb cave to prepare you for the time of nurturing yourself or newborn spirits. You know, you have to leave room for, for all things in the cave, in that womb cave, because if you limit it, you are limiting your feminine expression. So returning to the ceremonies, the sisters coming together, to create a ceremony that they all respect because it's created by sister energy, not by men. They're saying that you're going to take this or do this. The sisters created it. And from that framework, individuals who are sisters go off and do what they need to do to clear the energy each month. Mm. I guess in smaller communities in the past, um, the women would probably tend to have a very similar menstrual cycle. Would that be the case? Correct. And the children who were just at the right age and the men would stop their hunting or gathering or whatever they were doing and take over for two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can sort of, you can kind of see there's an aspect of women gathering and, and you know, um, the, the term secret women's business comes to mind. It's a very male term, a description of the fact that women have a, a natural urge to get together. I guess that's one of, all of, one of the things that's left over from what we're talking about here, which is the community participating in the cycle, not just the woman. It's always a community participant. That's why when it comes to boundaries, uh, respecting integrity of each one, the differences is highly vital. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when the woman's going through their cycle, as a man to respect woman's boundary, they stop hunting and mm -hmm. they take over the woman's job to do her job mm. for the survival of the community. That is respecting an, uh, her integrity and their integrity as a community and individual needs. Mm. When you look at the, uh, the industrialization of the entire, well, the entire Western civilization, uh, you can understand how that was so deeply disrupted by the movement yes. of, of men out of the out of the day to day lives to go off to work in in factories, etc. Yeah, and and the feminine movement, you know, initially it came off very strong, standing up for women's right, but then it got detracted and hijacked and contaminated. So. Um, the woman rights was supposed to stand up for, you know, the the woman's individuality and and the feminine energy force. But like I said, that's been contaminated. It put the woman into the workforce, which is the bad part of it. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's good and bad. It's not all bad, okay? The good part is, you know what? A lot of times when a woman having to go through the process, she also needs to... Um, uh, consume herself, keeping herself busy. She needs to have that moment too, rather than sit around and do nothing, because that will drive a person crazy. Okay, and then she'll start creating all this nonsense in her head, fabricating things, because that's what the mind does by understanding the mind, the nature of the mind. So it is it is uh, helpful to have her keeping her busy, yes, giving a job, but the problem with the job is the job nowadays is so, not just nowadays, but it has always been like that where it caused such a high demand for her to, in anyone, just to exist. And as a woman, as you know, they're, they're not as um, equally paid as the men. Mm -hmm. It is well documented in, even as a professor. More men doing the same job, same position, are much more highly paid than women. Mm. There, there, there's definitely a, um, uh, you know, um, a discrimination. Yeah. A discrimination. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, yeah, and, they, and, they, and women having, having a long, long time. With that, they, they, they have to work ten times extra hard, and then it causes the woman to convert themselves and give away their feminine energy, being to be men. So what they did, they convert 
all their hormones, their being to become adapted more into men, mentality, characteristic, energetically as well. So they give up their feminine hood. Yeah. Andrew, you were, you were putting forth I'm something? I'm saying that's been done for a very, very long time. And we're at this stage, we all know it, and the, the, the prose of Dickie's words hits home. Now, what do we do to change those concepts? Step one is women, get in touch with your menstrual cycle. Women who no longer have the organs to do it, that have had hysterectomies, or for people that no longer have their cycle, you still have a cycle. You just are unable to feel it because the energies of it are at such a low volume. And you still have a womb gate, whether you've had a hysterectomy or not. It is a spiritual part of your DNA in your light body. And it is still there. And you can reconnect to it. And when those that are, have had their cycle stop for whatever reason, you can restart it because you have had many years of it before and know exactly what it is, the expression. I, I encourage all women out there that have had hysterectomies to begin a, a proper meditation that reconnects you to the spiritual stargate. Men do not have it, and that's why they're always seeking it. Men have yes. to seek externally. Women have it internally. You have this great and wonderful gift. No matter if you've been butchered or not, you can get over that and get back into the connection to the 13 grandmothers and to the dreaming mind of Earth who is looking for sacred feminine women to be nurturers, to be healers, to be lovers, and not in a sexual way, but to love, to show love on all angles and omnidirectional presence. Mm. You know, not, not to say that this for some woman who has been sexually raped or ha had hysterectomy or any of their sexual organs, uh, their womb cave have been removed in some shape or form. Um, to give you an idea what it means is that there has been many studies done where uh, people who have had uh, di uh, diabetes and they had gangrene on their foot or their legs have been chopped off during the war, they still feel like they still have that part of the foot or the leg. It's called phantom. Uh, you know, uh, phantom pain. They still feel the pain, okay, even though they don't have the leg anymore. It's not injured anymore, okay? So it's kind of like that when you are missing that part of you in the, in the woman's sexual organs, her womb cage, okay? So you're still going to feel it on the etheric level. On top of that, all the cellular body and the connection is still programmed and exists in holistically inside your brain. It's programmed in your brain system. It's like saying you've got a computer, okay, and there's all these wires connect to it, and when the wire, let's say you connect to your cell phone or your microphone, is being pulled out, but it still exists. That connection is still exist. Okay, so I give you two um, analogies of how that would look like, okay, from a technical point of view and also the human aspect point of view. So yes, you can still connect with the energetic level. And mind you, as a human being, 3D density that we are, we're still light being. We're still light being. So we're just dense. <laughs> That's all we are. We're just dense. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, yes, connect, connect, connect. It is possible. Yeah, well, the phantom, the phantom limb syndrome that you're speaking of, that's, yes. that's been documented for a really long yes. time. And, and, look, it makes perfect sense that, that it would apply internally as well as externally. Yes, Because, as, as uh, Andrew said, it's written into our DNA and it's, it's there. And I, I suspect that if, if women examined their mood carefully, they would find that, yeah, that they could tell when that part of the cycle was upon them, even if it was only subtle. And they can, they can, you know, if they use the right meditative processes at that time, they can, you know, give homage to it and still have it as part of their lives. Yeah, when, when a woman goes through her cycle before she mends, you know, the intensity of the energy, it's like, think of it like a boiling pot of hot water. Everything is mixed. Okay, all the molecules, the atoms are mixing and, and hitting, okay, each other at a high, high, high rate speed and a volume, okay? Mm -hmm. So what it means is that the little molecules that hold the memory of your pain, your suffering, or any, any curiosity of anything that you ever have and experiences in life or seen or heard, taste, feel, touch, anything, gets, guess what? They all mixed up. They get mixed up, okay? When you meditate, you slow down that molecule hitting each other at a faster rate. So then it slows down the process, and then 
and then it allows it to go and and integrate in a in a properly organized category so where there is no confusion okay that's why the woman in the, in in the sacred practice she goes off in isolation to practice because they know that whatever comes out her mouth her attitude her energy will be at such an intense energy okay that is not always right and it's not her truth because it is not the truth when you got all these energy molecule smashing at each other at a high speed and it's all mixed up it is not the truth when she speak mm. you see what i mean yeah there's a lot of the, the emotional intensity of uh, of the of that part of the cycle is um, you know it leads to all sorts of um, aberrations of exchanges between uh, women and the people around them Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it just speaks towards the process that that both of you have been talking about, where you know the woman actually withdraws and simply regroups, re-energizes, exactly. and yeah. then you know, springs forth again. Right. And that that would make it you know far more tolerable and practical for everybody. But yeah. try try building that into an employment agreement. Yeah. You know that. You know, yeah, they they don't give a woman to uh, the space and honor her to allow her to process all those information. Mm. So, and if anything, they subject more uh, masculine uh, energy into her field in which she has to adapt to, mm. and for her to in in her three D reality as survival, right? Pay the bill, pay debt, pay whatever month food, roof over the head, whatever, all that yeah. responsibility. So they subject that as part of the fear into their existence. Mm. Andrew, the, the closing down of the menstrual cycle, the, you know, what, what we're calling menopause, in past times, it, uh, you know, did, that e- did that even happen to women as they aged? No. It's something that came around about 4,900 BC when the vibration of Earth was lowered to its lowest state and then the gene pool was uh, for for anyone incarnating on the feminine DNA side was changed with a big mass die off from a biological weapon that was targeting women and eliminating light bodies from being able to enter through the arcanic grid. Mm, that's pretty savage. That's, it had uh, been done many times before. It was the first time it was able to stick, though. Right, so... Because they had to get past the 13 grandmother energy. So did that result in a gradual um, a situation where the menstrual cycle faded out, but later more, in life? More like, we got to remember, a soul can incarnate as a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. It's more like it, it, it grinds away at the soul by taking more and more of the free will away, and more and more and more of the free will is away when a woman is born... That when you're born as a woman, you have a lot more away because you have the womb cave built inside you, whereas men are, are stuck into different habit patterns because they have to go out and search it. So if all the women that go out and search it don't have it, the only places left are places of power which are owned by sacred geometry buildings. So you're stuck. You know, the men, where do they go to the sacred geometry buildings that do not give them the energy they need, and they can't find it in the woman because the woman's all scrambled. Mm, what a mess. But a mess. It all interact. It all aligns to the sacred geometry, dream time cities. It all aligns to that. If you're stuck in the cities, you're never going to find the right feminine energy unless the feminine energy can break out of the programming. Hmm. So or the is, male energy. So Same the, thing. It has to break out. The paradigm we're living in, where where the male and female energy is so disjointed, this is nothing new. This is this has always been the case where there's been dream time cities in play. Correct. Okay, and it's a so matter if they are real dream time societies or if they are sacred geometry dream time societies that have people trapped in the reincarnation cycle. Is this, be, is this why the, um, the, the cities that, that are mythologically spoken of were so dominant in their day? Because there were, there were few of them, but they would have Correct. had a dramatic effect. Correct. Hmm. Okay, so in, the, in those times when the... When the um, women's cycle started to fade was it fading later in life than it is now it didn't fade it a didn't woman fade at give all. birth at, at all you remember we were still experiential beings and time was counted different then you know 4800 years ago we don't you didn't count time the way they do now the social agreement was really different so 
you know, you look at the historical record that paleontology says that, you know, women were 18, had two kids, and died by 30, well, that's false. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just what you see in that record of survival. But all those other beings who did survive, and instead of their bodies turning in, in their bodies because their culture allowed their bodies to turn to energy, which was still part of the reality then, you could give birth as long as you could find love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Inevitably. There was, so there was no limitation to the amount of None. time you had in your life to give birth. Correct. Hmm. No, it, it's about opening your heart chakra tapping into right. that quantum energy field, that infinite field, that all things are possible. But right. it's not the heart, it's not the easiest thing to um, tap into. Once you tap into, some can lose it. So you have to sustain it. That's why I create my technology to get there and to get there fast and to be able to sustain it. So then hmm. we can actually be more awakened and sustain our higher frequency to achieve more in this lifetime, considering um, this is a special timing where, you know, we have all these biochem. Uh, what else do we have, you know, with Assyria, hey, with the hey guys, flu, I gotta interrupt I've got to interrupt. I've got, a, I've got another call that I absolutely have to make. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'll pop back out on Skype and do a post show with you guys in a little bit. But i, I got to run. No problem, Andrew. Um, LA calls. That's right. LA calls. <laughs> That's right. Take it easy, guys. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Yeah. So uh, that that so, uh, that piece that Andrew read out, that Nikki, that was that was a really thoughtful really piece. Cool. I'm going to go back and listen to that again. I noticed some in, some folks in the chat room saying they were going to listen to it again too. Yeah, it, it's intense amount of information, and you know, it's not just about connecting to Mother Earth and uh, her wound and the, her heart. Um, it, it's also uh, has to do with the rotations of the moon cycle as well because the moon, it actually changed and altered the energy field on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, people don't just say the moon cycle for no reason because the energy, as we are energy, the energy, like I said, anytime you are close to your menstrual cycle because that is more energy pushed into your matrix, your womb cycle, your womb matrix, your womb cave, and it activates it. So it allows you to, like, hello, open up your stargate, hello. And in order to open that, it takes a large amount of energy. That's why the woman gets so intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she is over flooding with energy because it takes energy to open up the stargate. Nikki, can you see at uh, time, I mean, there's an awful lot of people on this planet. There's huge, you know, 7 billion people. And, and I think there have been civilizations that have had past, but, you know, in the past that have had a lot more. But, but at the moment, we've got 7 billion. Now, given that the, the moon cycle affects everybody, is it possible that pretty much every, every woman on the planet would actually... Hmm, would actually go through her menstrual cycle at the same time? Um, it, in unity consciousness, okay, which is like very far reach, uh, yes, that is the ultimate unity consciousness at that level. Mm. But unfortunately, it's not because we have been deterred by so many programming, okay? Yes. You have women that are running marathon. Since when do a woman start running a marathon and train her body until she has no body fat and she has no menstruation at all? Mm. Yeah, that's you a see pretty. What I mean? Oh, yeah, it's a pretty cruel thing to do to a body. It is. To do that. It yeah. is. And then they have this whole Olympic and whatever it is program that they push out to the woman to do the Olympic training. You know, do marathon and cross country, whatever that is. You know, I think it's great to embrace woman's power, but then you have to question, but when it jeopardizes her um, ability to control her target, mm. do, you, do you give up that right? You know, do you give that up? Do you set it aside? So it is in by individual, individual cases, whether they program in their um, individual belief system. And then, of course, you know, you got um, a lot of hijack situation where people have been um, um, raped. A lot of the women have been raped that have been hijacked, so a lot of times these women don't want to have children because they don't have good, um, you know, uh, outlook on their life and they've been traumatized. Mm -hmm. A lot of trauma put into that. So a lot of times women don't want to have children. They can literally shut down, mm -hmm. shut down their stargate. 
uh, a lot of other situations, like I said, career women, you know, the feminine movement opened up this whole thing about women going to the career world, being CEO and whatever. I think it's great allow women to embrace in that. But the consequence of that, they having to, like I say, give up their feminine rights, their energy, and be more patriotic in order to compete successfully amongst the, these um, men, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're giving up that right to choose to want to have children. And, and when they do, it's like, you know, a lot of these women, they're, they're not the most feminine people to be around. Yeah, well, they, they, a lot of them, the ones, especially the, um, those who participate in high-level commerce, um, they, yeah. they have to masculinize every aspect yeah. of, of themselves most of the time yeah. simply to survive and get into that particular right. part yeah. of the system. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's completely counter to you know, their natural state. It is, and and then you look at a lot of these high-paying job women who are very take on the the masculine energy. You look at their partner; most likely, he is the Mr. Mom. Mm -hmm. He has more the feminine energy to complement a man. Don't want to marry another guy, <laughs> even in a woman's body. A man can feel; he can feel that it is not a woman's energy. Mm. That's that's when that's why a lot of times you know men and women they meet. She hasn't been on top of the game yet, and then when she gets to the top, they go into a divorce because now she has basically embraced and transformed herself into so much masculine energy. He's like, I'm going to bed with another guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there yeah. has to be a divorce. Okay? Yeah. A man wants to be with the opposite, the complement, the yin and the yang. Okay? Masculine complements a woman. Even if you look at the gay situation, Okay, you look at the guy who embraces the masculine energy and the other one feminine energy, and sometimes they'll revert back and forth. They'll take different roles, but the point is there has to be a balance that brings harmony into unity as one, one and unity of oneness and consciousness mm. as well. Yeah, look, there's so many aspects of unity consciousness that that will, will bring all of this missing, all these missing aspects are going to come roaring back into focus and be dealt with, I think. Yeah. And, and, this, and, and will, this will be one of them for sure. Yes, and I definitely like to uh, discuss more maybe in the show, next show, whenever we have the time, permit us to do that, is to discuss and clarify more what is unity consciousness. It is overrated. It has been, been misused, misinterpreted. So it's a light worker, energy worker, uh, ascension. Mm -hmm. So those are the words that we need to clarify because it's been misunderstood and misused so much so that it has caused disunity amongst uh, the people in the community, friendship, even yeah, well, for soul family. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot. You know, every time that there's a, a a really powerful meme emerges, there's a really powerful disinformation program about it. Yes, and that's something we really have to pay attention to in in this whole process that we're going through because the um, the end result is is going to be the same. We will ultimately get where we need to go. It's just a very bumpy road if we're not paying attention, extremely bumpy. Yes. And the more, I, the more I hear about the way that the female cycle has been disrupted, the more that I'm understanding how things should be. And... And, and another thing is on, on, on a deeper level, um, you know how as, as a woman uh, with the star, holding the stargate, she has to be connected to Mother Earth. As a woman, it's almost like automatically you are connected to Mother Earth. It's just now it's a question of whether you want to disconnect and how much, what is the measurement, you know, what level are you connected to her. And those who are connected okay, can feel a lot of what is going on with her and how she's thinking and all her chakras. Because I've done a lot of healing with Mother Earth where I literally go inside Mother Earth, work on her crystal grid, okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, but here's the thing, okay, it's also being hijacked. <laughs> uh, the Chinese and I believe the Americans have already gone inside Mother Earth. They have found the hollow earth. They have already in, gone inside. So now they are trying to control Mother Earth at that level. Okay, so imagine all the women, millions of us who exist, okay, that are tuning into Mother Earth, more so than men. What is the consequences of that as it is being controlled now in the heart of Mother Earth? Mm. 
Yeah. That's not good news, actually. That is not good news that they're that they're fiddling around at that level. They really need to not be doing that. <laughs> That's, no, but you can understand but they already why. Found a way. They already found a way to go inside. Mm. Yeah, it's all over the Taiwanese news. In Taiwan, a lot of information like this, when it comes to spiritual metaphysic uh, information, it's abundant. It's really? rampant. Really? Yes, it's not censored. If anything, they promote it. Mm. Okay, so but just in Taiwan or elsewhere? Uh, mainly in Taiwan, but not in China. China is still more. <laughs> what do you want to call? <laughs> you know, the red controlled. People, it's controlled. controlled. It's heavily yeah. controlled. It's sure. still it's still heavily controlled. Yeah. Where's Taiwan? That's why Taiwan. When you talk to Taiwanese, they don't consider themselves as Chinese mm. because they're not. They they're very metaphysic people in Taiwan. So these kind of information are much more prevalent for the people, the public to know about, and you know they they know a lot. They have their own agency and connections of what is going on in China and they post it all over the mm -hmm. news, media, their their media of course that's censored within their countries. Yeah, so if you can read Chinese, Taiwanese, definitely go and look into a lot of Taiwanese news. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there's a big push in India. There's a lot of technological stuff to discussed it on Indian media that never reaches the West. They're, they're into free energy, they're into all sorts of um, more solid information about, um, you know, sightings of extraterrestrial craft, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And it's it's much more mainstream than it is yes. in the West. Yeah, and so I'm not surprised to hear about the Taiwanese um, spreading metaphysical information. That would that would be um, part of the paradigm that the the West uh, the, the culture of the West is, is held in isolation and hypnotized by the media. And the sorts of effects we've been talking about today are, you know, just uh, the, the information about what the menstrual cycle should be like, the experience of it for the community, not just the woman, uh, only indicates the degree to we've been, which we've been separated from our real selves. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole process of control has always been one of separation always and uh, it's it's that gap that's being um, filled by programs like this so you know much gratitude to yourself Nikki and to Andrew I mean Andrew's not here but we'll we'll say it anyway uh, much gratitude to the both of you from all of us out here who are receiving this information and processing it and reflecting on you know the degree to which um, we're not what we what we should be, what we could be. So it, it is up to individual, Chris. It's all mm -hmm. about free choice, free will. You know, with this information, we have to stand up and take that responsibility. As many don't want to take responsibility and continue to use the word, as I said, misuse the word. I'm in the love field. You know, I'm in the family, soul family, love field. Therefore, whatever I say I do is out of love. And that's not true. A lot of times, they don't want the responsibility and they keep going into that void where they just, B, it's the void of not taking responsibility, and, and then what they do is they give up their power. Mm. Okay, they give away their power. So I ask that each one of you who are listening to go within yourself and check. Check yourself. You know, to be strong, you have to know your weakness. You mm. have to know your weakness. And by knowing that, accepting and forgiving yourself and giving yourself love for being that, you can overcome it and say, damn it, I want my power back. Mm. I want my power back. I'm responsible for me, for my existence. You know? That's the step that, um, that, that we all take. And you can take it in a whole lot of different ways. But, but yeah. yeah, look, looking within... Looking within, that's uh, and you just made a very good point by by examining those things about yourself that you dislike the most, forgiving yourself, losing your attachment to it, yeah. and and just setting your intention about doing it a different way. It, it's just so it it is a really healing step, and you know once you've done it a few times, and it, and it you have to, you, it's something that you have to do repeatedly because you're fighting habit. You're always yeah. fighting print habit. When I say habit, think of programming. You know, we've been programmed yeah. into a bunch of habits, and uh, largely the aspect of freeing ourselves is is recognizing that we're just breaking habits that have been forced upon us. That's right, and if you're and you're correct about the word habit. It's not habit. It is programmed. Mm. It is programmed. And you know, once we recognize that, and um, 
you know, we're programmable. That's that's an yes, aspect of humanity. We are. We, we are programmable, and and part of our responsibility is actually programming ourselves. Yes, and we do program ourselves because due to free will, and also yes. Outside forces can program you as well. Your family, friends, environment can also program you. So before you start pointing fingers, look within yourself first because that is ultimately how you can reject, revoke all those programs is to go within first. Mm, very much so. And Nikki, we're coming up to the end of the show. Um, this particular show uh, is, is can be extended, but the other shows I'm doing are fixed at two hours, but uh, this one can be extended a bit, which is good because it means we can have these wind-up conversations at a, at a more relaxed pace. But um, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And just before we go, I, I just wanted to do two things. The, um, the way it's shaping up, uh, as you gather from our conversation before, is there's going to be a big release about Nikki Fetzi. Nikki Fetzi's um, real purpose on this planet and, and, and where her, her Kuan Yin energetics come from, that's going to be put right out there, Nikki, I gather, from, from your intention and our discussion earlier. Yes, uh, it is not my intention, but it is the time as humanity is evolving at the rate that we are now. As the tension is rising, that is coming up in uh, the end of November and also over to December. There's going to be many huge events that's coming. We already foreseen uh, Syria, what's going on, and already affecting people here in the United States and also other parts of the world. As a result, it is not my intention, but it's the intention of the source and the uh, global demands and collective uh, demands of what needs to be done at this level. Uh -huh. So this is something you wouldn't necessarily have done. I personally do not care what I am, who I am, mm -hmm. and what I do. I mm -hmm. ju I'm just here to be and exist, to be able to love, to be loved, to enjoy life, and to live within peace within myself and within the environment that I'm in. Mm -hmm. So as b human being that's my intention but on the higher greater scale it is part of my spirituality my path my professional job I, I put it in that aspect mm -hmm. then then I am here to do a greater good for humanity that is part of who I am mm -hmm. so that has to be done mm -hmm. it is not about what I want it's about what humanity needs at this time you know, what Nick is referring to is the fact that 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 simply putting out the information that's that's coming about Kuan Yin and the energetics of Kuan Yin will will gather together um, what what you referred to in your discussions with me, Nikki, is the goddess energy, which will mitigate some of the geopolitical aspects of things that are going that are going that are coming in our future. Yes, and that's why you're doing this. So yeah, look much gratitude to you for, for taking this step so um, I'm, pro I'm feeling that probably next Thursday's show will be the beginning of that process is that what you're feeling too? Uh, I think uh, as Andrew had mentioned he wanted this to be a solid non-distraction uh, through teleseminar yeah. so that's how uh, he, he would like to have it since he's the one that's going to be doing the reading on me mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it'll be interesting it'll be a solid time because many times on the Thursday show we always have distractions of you know yes. so many things but that's because there's so much things that needs to be out there for our listeners mm -hmm. and we want to cater to for them as well so I know time is a constraint here it's a it's it's the enemy of all things, mm -hmm. but um, you know because there's so much to to inform and so much to discuss, and so many people need these pertinent information. Mm, yeah, so we'll set it up as teleseminar. Set it up as a teleseminar. That's that sounds like it's where it's headed. So stay tuned, folks, for that. That's going to be uh, a very very interesting event. Andrew's done a certain amount of reading with myself, and uh, the information is always quite stunning. And and not that you know one of the things that folks need to to realise is that that we are all galactic in nature. We all came here from elsewhere. And if if Andrew does a reading for almost anybody, well anybody that's listening to this call, you're going to find out stuff that you just go, whoa, wasn't expecting that because our perspective is so confined. 
and uh, it's it's a it's a really amazing experience, especially for uh, you know a, a being like Nikki, who's who's been a very busy soul in in you know many past lives would not even begin to actually describe it. So, looking forward to that, Nikki. And just to, to preface the shows next week, uh, certainly the Tuesday show with Andrew and myself, we're actually going to um, head into an area that, that, that Andrew started on his adventures, uh, adventures series radio shows last year, which was looking at some legal aspects. That, that swung into focus at the moment, partially because of the edict of the Pope on the 1st of September, stripping away protections from uh, things connected to the Catholic Church, which includes the legal system, because that's opened some possibilities. So we're going to be talking about a specific legal process, which um, Andrew's view of the future Akashic, Akashic shows is going to be very important. So anyone who's interested in the in the legal aspects of the shift that that is coming, that's going to be us taking back our sovereignty, uh, that's going to be a particularly important show to listen to because we're going to reboot that discussion. As Nikki just pointed out, there is so much information that we have to put out there. It's actually hard to know. Uh, you know, we, doing these shows five days a week still wouldn't be enough. No, it's not enough to cover a million years of what went on collectively, universally, and also in this uh, lifetime. And, you know, how, how many million years ago, just on Earth alone, mm -hmm. at so many uh, dimensions. And, you know, talk, talk about the Vatican situation. You know, um, I, I know that the Vatican, they, they every time the Pope, and the Popes or any of their members die, what they do is they trap their soul on, that, in, on the Vatican property. So then they can hold the energy there. That's that's really wrong. It's, it is mm. definitely against the karmic, against the karmic path. Okay. So could you imagine? That's why they can do what they can do, mass things, and do uh, continue with the corruption. But because there are several people that already had gone and released some of the Pope's uh, soul, that's why they have no protection, and a lot of things are being revealed. Mm. Okay, so imagine if people like us go over there, and I'm actually like doing a whole mass of ancestral karmic healing just for the Vatican alone. I can't imagine what could happen at the energy level. Mm. All the protection they're trying to get, contracts, whatever, all will just melt away, dissipated. Mm, I think the Vatican because there is no energy to help them hold that anymore. Remember, we're energy, so it takes energy to to drive it however we want to drive and redirect it. There's a very interesting YouTube video that's just come out, which is, um, I'll, I'll pop it in the chat here. I'd just like people to have a look at this. It's called Stunning Animation of Every Protest Since 1979. Now, if you think that not enough people are standing up and taking action, take a look at this because it's, it's actually uh, increased dramatically and continues to increase. So, the, you know, the collective is waking up. We are starting to take back our sovereignty mm -hmm. in large numbers and the process Nikki was just referring to of removing our energy for the system, that's actually well underway. And we need to understand that and, and that we're all part of it and that it's going to, to increase. Right. And part, so. part of my job in this lifetime, okay, is um, to be able to release karmic, ancestral karmic release, karma in this lifetime mm -hmm. to all uh, sentient beings. And that includes animals too. So, and also the uh, certain planets, um, land. Okay, so there, there's no, not much restriction there. And that's part of the ascension process is to release a lot of that old, um, holding, old energy to holding you back. When it, and then it, what it does, it goes and unlocks that key, you know, unlocks that storage of all the junk that's been placed. Once that open, then it takes people, all the listeners, people like you and I go and say, you know, demonstrate and say, we don't want this anymore. We refuse to pay all our mortgage with all this bankruptcy and all of that. We refuse for the banking to come and take over our land, our property. 
and that's when it dissipates much faster. Mm. Otherwise, it would take a lot of people. I'm talking about like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to take action legally, physically, mentally, emotionally. Go in there, stand up in front of them, and say, we're not doing that. The okay. problem with that in the mass amount of um, people that would stand up, it's hard to try to gather everyone because we're not at unity consciousness level. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, and the, the, uh, as you see more people actually taking that step of publicly standing up to the system, then, you know, then we'll actually know that things are really getting traction. Yeah, and, moment, and not just publicly, but, when, okay, let me define publicly. Publicly meaning you can go in front of the building with your words, your, your you know, uh, sign and all of that. You can send, e um, you know, uh, uh, mails and whatever, poster and all that. That's being public. But you can also go out there in public in your own space. That is, you know what, you're going to go to the corner and you're going to subject the cones, redirect the energy, filter it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're actually really doing the work in public, but you're not out there face to face. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's being con that's called confrontation. You don't need to confront them. You can be in public and do the work. Anytime you are outside of your home space, you are out in public mm -hmm. doing work. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there's just different levels. If you're aware of it, it 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 will uh, increase that. For sure, and if you sure. if you're consciously doing it, you know people commuting to and from work, <clears throat> just walking the streets of the city, could be negating the energetic effects of of the of the city itself if yes. they were aware that they could do it, that it could be done, yes. and that's um, you know that that maybe that will come too, Nikki, if we can spread this information far enough. Right, and you know, Chris. Um, so on the twenty first of September, is that the next week? That's that's coming up. Um, do you think that because uh, we had planned on doing the uh, the ley line, the sacred geometry? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking about maybe on the 15th on a Sunday. Then maybe that's that would be like the day, the 14th or the 15th of uh, the the coming out party. <laughs> uh, for for yourself, look, yes. we we'll, look. Uh, uh, that's probably the reason we need to jump on Skype uh, after this conversation and yeah. uh, and work that out with Andrew because okay. um, yeah, that's. That's only just come up in the last 24 hours, so the yeah, planning is Yeah, because it, has, it has to be done ASAP right now because he is also uh, going to the momentum of getting more busy where he's not going to even have the time. So um, I'm just going to leave it up to him of how he wants to make this happen because, yeah, yeah. you know, come, coming in terms and say to myself, okay, Nikki, you got, you got to surrender and letting go of who you are maintaining that it's it's time because humanity is asking for your assistance so you just have to do your job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's it's been a long process journey for me to come to this level okay well look we'll get that sorted straight after the this conversation is done okay and uh, we'll just <clears throat> begin promoting it so folks if you keep an eye out on Andrew's website Facebook and on sovereignmedia.net and uh, I'll put it up on my own Facebook and Nikki can, Nikki can uh, that's, that's uh, Facebook is Chris Hales Radio um, and Nikki can actually promote that through hers if we have to do it uh, at short notice uh, we'll just promote it as much as we can so please keep an eye out for it and of course you can always catch up to it afterwards as a download but uh, it always helps to have the um, the audience participation for sure. So Nikki, look, let's wind it up for there for today. Thank you so much for your time, as usual. My pleasure. And uh, we'll we'll just keep plugging on, putting this information out there. And for everyone in the chat room, there's a couple of people with their hands up. Um, been a pretty intense session today. Um, so please please join us again on on Tuesday. We'll do questions at the start of the show for a while uh, just to make sure we get through some questions on when I say yeah well, on, on the next Tuesday in the US and that will be Wednesday in Australia so Nikki I'd say good day to you and to the listeners out there uh, have a great week and weekend um, and we'll see you next time thank you Chris for amazing job that you do for all of us it's a pleasure and a privilege see you next time everybody <laughs>